go to Mars, but artists have been there before us. And there were all kinds of ideas for Martian bases. And earlier on, I spoke to our leading astronomical artist, David Hardy. Mars has been the most interesting planet, I suppose, for as far as artists are concerned, for many, many years. Um, and certainly in the, in the 50 years, almost 50 years that we've worked together, it, our ideas on Mars have had to change dramatically several times. They have. And this is a painting, one of my very first ones that I did for a, when we were, we were talking about doing a book called Challenge of the Stars together. I remember we did it too. In 1954. And that again shows Mars um, with, with a blue sky and with vegetation, strips of vegetation, which were what we called canals. That was the best available evidence at the time. It turned out yeah. to be wrong. It wasn't our fault. Now, the, um, the most prolific artist in the 1950s was, of course, Chesley Bonnestell, okay. who worked uh, with uh, the, the German rocket designer Werner von Braun. This is a Bonnestell painting of Mars, beautiful painting again, with, uh, with traces of canals, uh, the southern polar cap. Ludek Peszek was really famous for painting uh, dust storms on Mars. He was a Czechoslovakian artist who uh, moved to Switzerland and lived there for a number of years and also did a lot of work for the uh, National Geographic magazine working in America in the 1970s. And I met him once twice, nice job. That's one of my early pictures I did with, uh, yes. for the, for, in fact, for the book called Challenge of the Stars, which we did together in 1972. It's a long ago, was that? Yes, indeed. <laughs> um, and that, of course, shows Mars. By that time, we, we knew that how thin the atmosphere was, and therefore the sky there is shown as a very, very dark blue. But the sun is glow glowing there in the, in the dark sky. And uh, you can see there are craters and, um, again, of course, deserts. This is a painting by a British artist called Richard Bisley, and it shows some of the uh, very dramatic canyons on Mars. And Richard has shown the, uh, the canyon as having early morning fog in it, because this is what happens, isn't it, when the, when the carbon dioxide uh, sort of ice and snow that is deposited during the Martian night uh, sublimes as the morning sun hits it, it forms this, these clouds of, uh, of, of mist. It would be nice to think that these, uh, these canyons correspond to the Rolls Canals, but of course they don't. They don't, unfortunately, no. I check that out. No. Now, by the time we did the um, updated version of Challenge of the Stars, which we rather imaginatively called the new Challenge of the Stars in 1978, Viking had landed on Mars and sent back pictures, and we knew then that uh, the sky isn't, in fact, blue at all, or, or dark, dark blue or black. It, it was a sort of pinky-orange colour, which came There's so much, so much dust in the Martian yes. atmosphere. Yes, it's uh, the atmosphere actually, be, although it's very thin, it's a lot of su suspended dust hangs about. Here we've got a, a, a painting by... Um, for the first time, in fact, a female artist, uh, Lynn Perkins, who's also American, and she's shown the fact that you do get, after the Martian night, you get frost on Mars, you get quite large areas where there's, um, and Viking also saw this, didn't it, at times, during the Martian winter, where there are patches of, uh, of frost on the ground. This one's called um, Martian Odyssey. It's, it's by another American artist called uh, Frank Hettig, and uh, he works using some in on the computer, but using some interesting techniques in, involving uh, painting and also his, his own photographs that he takes and then superimposes them into, onto the pictures. And finally, looking far into the future, uh, this is a painting I did um, of a Mars that's been terraformed. Now, some people like Carl Sagan and Arthur C. Clarke have suggested this, and they've, they've also written in, in books about the terraforming of Mars, converting it into an Earth-like world. I wonder, David, how far ahead they're going to be, do you think? I think we're looking uh, a couple of hundred years ahead, probably, but... Um, I would have thought more than that. I may be wrong. Yeah. I mean, it'll take a long time just simply to release the gases anyway. It'll, it could take hundreds of years even to do that. Well, but, we won't see it, but I think that people who live there will look back at your painting for the 21st century and say, well, you were right most of the time. Well, I hope so. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> We've been to the moon. The last man to go there was Eugene Cernan, who left in 1972. But what about Mars? That is far more difficult. Remember, Mars is always millions of miles away and good around the sun, not around the Earth. So can we go there and can we possibly change it or terraform it, make it more like the Earth where we can live in the open? Well, that lies a long, long way ahead, but um, who better to answer that than Arthur C. Clarke, the great visionary? So, Arthur, what do you think about it? I'm sure you remember the days when any thoughts and he talk of space travel, going to the moon, what nonsense. Uh, there was a famous scientist back in the last century who proved uh, it was nonsense for a simple argument. Uh, it takes so many, uh, so many, uh, so much energy to carry, say, one 
pound of explosive away from the earth. No explosive contains enough energy. To, it would take the energy of 10 pounds of explosive to take one pound away from the earth. So therefore it was impossible. Why it never occurred to him that, okay, use 10 pounds of explosive to send one pound away from the earth, the explosives that do the job and stay right here on earth. That's the sort of argument we had to put up with. Uh, and then it came, uh, even more ridiculous, of course, were the people who said that, well, surely you know that space is a vacuum. There's nothing there for a rocket to push against. When and how will we have manned, sorry, personed space flight to Mars? Well, <clears throat> certainly not for 10 years. I doubt if in 20. However, if there was some urgent reason, if, for instance, we found there was a cure for AIDS on Mars, we could be there within five years. But I think more likely to be 25. Terraforming Mars, what would it look like? Well, terraforming means changing a planet so it resembles Earth. And a lot of people think this is a bad idea. You know, we should leave the planets as they are, not mess around with them. Well, we have terraformed one planet already, the planet Earth. Uh, there wouldn't be so many people living on it now if we hadn't developed agriculture and irrigation, all sorts of techniques which have enabled us to change our, much of our planet to a more habitable place. So um, I suspect we will terraform Mars or certainly large areas of it.